What's up, North County? I'm your host, Randy Doty, and today we have a special guest. We have the one, we have the only, Brooke Smith, Miss California Mid-State Fair. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Pretty good. So tell me, how was your, how was your year? We, you were in studio, let's see, uh, shortly after you won mm -hmm. last summer, Yeah. right? And didn't really know what to expect. <laughs> no, not at all. So tell me, <laughs> tell me a little bit about what's been happening. Um, so we've done a lot of things like parades and just um, like community outreach things. Uh, we did the Colony Days Parade, the Pioneer Day Parade, the Christmas Parade in Paso. Um, but we also have done a lot of community service stuff. We did the toy bank that the uh, fair hosted this year. And we helped at VFW this year at their annual chili cook-off. And we actually did the bell ring for the Salvation Army this year because that was a thing I've done before and I wanted them to do this year. Um, so really just a lot of things we've had just trying to get involved with the community. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So it's been, has it been pretty stressful? Has it been pretty mellow? I mean, tell me the experience. Um, it's kind of on and off. We've had months like October and December that are every weekend we have like two events. <laughs> and so it's a little st stressful trying to get everything organized, trying to get everything planned. But it's really worth it because after everything's done, you're like, wow, that was a great experience I've never had before. And it was good to do. But when, whenever you were out and about, I mean, you're usually with somebody else, like maybe yeah. you're, you're runner up. So you mm -hmm. have Sarah Barr, mm -hmm. which is the first runner up. And then Jenna, Jenna Shapiro, mm -hmm. the second runner up. Yeah. So you're usually with one or maybe both of them, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the game for, um, as you guys are going to these different permits, per events, promoting it, you guys are all showing up for that. Yeah. Sometimes somebody can't show up just because of there's something else going on in life, but most of us try to be there for every event that we have scheduled. Awesome. Which ones are have have been the most fun, like being um, involved with? Oh, that's hard because I know, like the other girls, they really do like the parades and stuff. But I actually have a lot of fun with the community service stuff. I actually want to do more things than we have scheduled because it's just so fun. Like when we do stuff with little kids, you get to see little kids have their faces light up when they see the queen and the princesses, or you get to see people that are like. Why do they have a crown on? But that's cool that they're helping us. Right. And so it's just a really neat experience to be able to represent the fair like we're doing and also help the people that we're helping. So that crown, I mean, it's got a way, you know, it's a couple pounds, it's, right? It's a little bit. Yeah. At, during fair, because we were out every day, I had a dent in my head. Oh, really? Of how heavy it was. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so how many diamonds do you think are on there? Too many. <laughs> so this, this, so this crown probably is like somewhere in the neighborhood of like four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars mm -mm. that you're wearing around the community, right? This is fake. What? Yes. Oh, you keep the real one at home. We don't have a real one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we but, get to keep the crowns though. We don't have to give them off to the next person. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So you get to. So you wear that all day long. Is that the? Is that what you do? So yeah. you wear. You wear that. I mean, that's your. That's your job title. You are Cal. You are Miss California Mid State Fair. Mm -hmm. So you got to represent represent everywhere you go. So you got to wear the crown and the sash everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, Are you this, really? this thing, I'm surprised it isn't yellow yet, actually, because we're always wearing this stuff. What's the most unique place that you've, like, worn that? Like, somebody's like, Brooke, what are you doing? You're, you don't have to wear that right now. Um, probably, like, in between events, like, during Pioneer Day, um, I walked into, like, a donut shop, and I was wearing this, and they were just kind of looking at me, like, <laughs> oh, what are like you doing? One of the, the, like, the <laughs> Miss... Don't like the the Asian donuts shops yeah. that are in Paso. Yeah. So they're probably going, whoa, royalty. Like, <laughs> hey, who's this? Yeah. That's funny. So, but but in all honesty, you don't really wear that everywhere you go, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. you do wear it in all the events that you participate. Yeah. Every time I'm representing, it's I wear the crown and the sash. So, what kind of events other than 
um, not publicized, do you do you have to do? I mean, what what did you do throughout the year? Like, you know, you won. Now mm -hmm. you're here. You know, you went did the parades. You did all the the community service. But I mean, there's got to be some stuff behind doors that you're doing too. Yeah, most of it is actually getting ready for the next pageant. Um, we are attending the board of directors dinner soon, and that's not really a publicized thing. That's just a cool thing that the fair does. But um, we are having the practices starting soon, and so. There's a lot of getting ready for that, trying to get contestants to come out. I've done a couple interest meetings, just meeting girls at high schools, trying to get them to come out and do that kind of thing. Hmm. And you wear that, of course, Yes. <laughs> when you go to the high schools. And so are you getting a lot of um, reception with that and with the girls from high schools? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of the girls at the high schools I think will be next year because there's a lot of younger girls that want to do it, which is good though, like mm -hmm. getting future generations. So I have no clue how this year is going to turn out. So it's an age it's an age thing. You have to be mm -hmm. a certain age? Yeah, it's 17 to 24. Okay. Yeah. So you're really targeting like high school seniors mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, first year college and, and that. So you've yeah. been to a Tascadero, Paso, Templeton? I've done Paso and Templeton. I'm trying to do Tascadero still. Quest to college? I have not done Cuesta. No? No. The North County campus? Mm-mm. Nope. I should probably try to do that, actually. I didn't <laughs> think about that one. I've just been doing high schools. <laughs> so tell me about some of the interesting, you know, people that you've met this past year. Um, we've met quite a few different people. Um, of course, like, we got to meet Tom and Becky, so that was cool. Pepper Daniels at the fair. We opened concerts with them, announced concerts. Uh-huh. Um, we got to meet Senator John Laird, so that was pretty cool. Um, we've just gotten to meet a lot of different people that do a lot of different things. Um, there was this really, really cool program that they had at the fair. I don't know if you saw in the very back of one of the buildings, they were building a little house. Um, and the woman that, run that ran that actually, it was for um, this thing called Operation Webs, and it was for women veteran, and they're trying to make this community of small houses to... Oh, really? Yeah, and it was a really, really cool experience, and she told us all about us. I think her name was Sandy, if I remember right. Um, and she told us all about this thing that she's been doing for a couple of years and building these houses and planning these communities, and it was such a cool thing. And hmm. I think she's actually been one of my favorite people I've met because she was so passionate about it, and it was such like a good thing that she was doing it was really great has it were any of them i'm sure you met a lot of the the, the country and rock and all the the, mm -hmm. the musical um artists that came through the fair right yeah we met maddie and tay colt ford um we met fog hat and there was actually on, only one original member so we got our we have autographs on the back of our sashes we got an autograph from the drummer who's the only original member okay um we got to meet who else was there I think we met Dante and the Vibe Setters. They're kind of local legends around here. They play a lot. Um, yeah, there's just other people like that. W did they ask you any questions? I mean, other than you being, hey, the, you know, stars, whatever. But I mean, obviously, I mean, you're you're kind of like a local star. Yeah. You know, so what was their questions to you? Really, just oh, how'd you get this? What is this? Why why are you wearing a crown? Just being like, oh, that's that's pretty cool that they have that for you guys. Oh, really? Yeah. And so you got to kind of talk with them a little bit mm -hmm. and jive a little bit yeah and kind of be backstage during their performance or uh yeah we got to announce for all of the concerts on the grandstand and the frontier stage which is pretty cool and so if we got the chance we would get to meet the people that were singing um and then we got to hang out for a little bit oh fun see yeah so you have um your your reign is coming coming to an end yes right and so the let's see april 21st mm -hmm. is your deadline for applications yes so tell me a little bit what is needed for somebody to submit um to be miss california mid-state fair so i believe this year you have to have two letters of recommendation um you have to know what you want to do as your talent or have at least a couple ideas and they'll help you go over that more with the practices um you have to upload a picture of yourself so the judges can see who you are because that's their first impression of you is that application um, but you do get to go over it and fix little things during practices <laughs> which is nice um and you have to do like a list of your skills your achievements and 
there's a couple things of like, what do I think of myself and why would I be a good Miss California Mid-State Fair Queen? So a couple different sections. So it's a, it's a little bit of work to, to, it's not just like, hey, Brooke Smith, Templeton, here's my phone number, I want to, you know, register. Yeah. Yeah, no, you have to be willing to do it and you have to be willing to put in the work for it and they want to see that in the application. So so one question I have, when your mom introduces you to new people, <laughs> does she introduce you as your da- as her daughter, uh, Brooke Smith, or does she introduce you as her daughter, California Mid-State Fair Queen, my daughter? Yeah, no, my mom, my dad, my grandpa, a lot of the time it's this is my daughter, Brooke. She's the queen. That's a, a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the highlight, huh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I, I, I could see Renee um, like having a sticker on the back of the truck. You know how it says, oh, gosh, like yeah. the little stickers that says my, my kid was on a roll at Templeton Middle School. Yeah. I could, I could see, I could see, I could see them I both. Know. They need to make merch or something. Yeah, little that. stickers on the back of their bumper that says my dollar, my daughter is California, Miss California Mid-State Fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know cool. we need one. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that's super cool. So now um, as these applicants come in, mm-hmm. so you have a 20, April 21st deadline at 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. So, and they're, and they're hard cracking on at 4 yeah, p.m., right? definitely, yeah. So if it's 401, forget about it. Next year, you can try again, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so, but you cannot submit your name in to be a two-peter, Mm-mm. right? There's no two-peating nope. for you. No. If you're the first runner-up or second runner-up or you ran before and you didn't win, you can run again. But once you're queen, you're you're done. How does that make you feel? Like it's coming to an end. It's kind of sad because it has been a really great experience. And of course, I get introduced as the queen all the time. So that's kind of a fun thing. But um, I, it's exciting to see what next girls will be coming in and who I can help achieve what I've achieved and help them have the same experience that I've experienced. So, so you seem like a very modest, very like, you know, like you don't really like the limelight, you know? And so do you ever just say, stop calling me that, stop it. Yeah, (laughs) I, because I know that some people could probably be like, I'm the queen and I've never been one of those people. They could be like. Yeah. And so of course I'm like, wow, this is great that I've gotten this, but I know that the girls I've competed with were amazing at what they did, and I think that they all could have deserved it too, or do deserve it, and I just, I think that I got lucky, (laughs) and that the judges just liked what I did, just a teensy bit more, and it worked out in my favor, but I've never thought that, oh, I'm better than all these girls, or that I'm the only one that could be in this position, because it's really not, it's not fit for one person, it's people who just put themselves out there. Are yeah, the I mean, you're, I you're a very humble person. You know, <laughs> you're not, you're not very, you're not, you know, you don't present yourself as like, you know, high, you know, almighty, you know, type. I you know what I'm saying? To, yeah. So, um, which is cool, which is probably why you won. Um, one of the reasons. But um, so what the fair is in end of July, it's mid-July? July 19th, I believe. It's okay. the first day of fair. And I think it's at six o'clock this year. So what do you have planned between now and then for event-wise? Pretty much just practices and the events that the contestants will have to go to. Um, The Estrella Warbirds and Wings, I Uh think is what it's called. We go to that. We do the 4th of July Parade in Cayucas. Um, I think we have a couple other things planned. I think we'll probably have a couple other radio things like with Tom and Becky because that's what we did last year. Mm Um, but really it's just putting the contestants forward now and getting them ready. So are you prepping anybody that you know to like, like you gotta do this, you gotta do this? Um, yeah, there's been a couple people. I'm like, oh, come on, you should do it. And I think there's one of my friends that's a little interested. So I think she's gonna pop in and see if she likes it or not. So. And your friends never say, Brooke, stop asking me. I'm not gonna <laughs> no. do it. <laughs> no. I mean, cause it seems kind of cool. It seems fun. Yeah, it's definitely nerve wracking, but it is fun. What's the biggest thing you're going to take away from the last year being California Mid-State Fair Queen? Um, really just that it's not all that it seems like it is. And like how I was saying, it seems like it needs to be this one type of person that's, oh, I'm a pageant queen. But it's really just anybody that is like, oh, I have a talent and I am going to try and work on speaking in public. And even if that's not something I'm good at, I'm going to try. And 
still ending up winning, it's that's something that like almost anybody can do really if they just try and if they just listen to advice given to them. And so it just changes your perspective on only one person, one characteristic is able to get into this role. It's like, no, anybody can get into this role if they try hard enough. Right. And I think you hit on something as far as uh, speaking in public. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, I would say that everybody's fear. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have to have a certain type of personality, be a certain type to really not care. I mean, really, that's essentially what it is. You just mm -hmm. don't care what anybody, you know, <laughs> thinks of you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and, you know, that's the fear of talking in public mm -hmm. to, oh, not mess up. Oh, what if I forget, you know, my lines? What do I, what if I forget this person's name, call him somebody else, you know? And so, but they teach you how to do all that stuff mm -hmm. once you get into that, that wheel. Yes. So during the practices, we have a lot of public speaking practice and interview skills practice because there is an interview the day before the pageant. It's like a, a job interview, basically. Um, so that's good in itself. You get practice for interviewing for a job. But the public speaking, I think every girl that did it was like, oh, this is a little scary. There's it's the frontier stage. There's going to be endless seats. Anybody could come in. It's not even ticketed. So you don't know how many people are going to be right. there. And so I think that was very nerve wracking. And I know me and Sarah, especially, we were very nervous the weeks leading up beforehand. I think Sarah was having nightmares. Like, <laughs> yeah. like we were nervous. I believe it, I believe it. But honestly, once you get up there, it's way less scary than during the practices. And you just have to tell yourself like, you know, I signed up for this in April and everybody has done this the years before. And even though it's gone good or bad for them, they still did it and it still ended up fine. And you just have to be like, I'm, I'm just here and I just, I have to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a big task. Yes. You know, and especially, you know, young people that's, you know, if you're not accustomed to talking amongst la mm -hmm. large crowds, you know, even just, you can, you can hear their voice cracking, mm -hmm. you know, you can just tell, you know, people are nervous mm -hmm. and they're not accustomed to, you know, talking in front of people. Yeah. So, and maybe that, you know, it's one of those things to where, you know, as you do it more, you know, I'm sure you've probably gotten better, yes. you know, with your, your fear. I mean, I don't, you probably didn't have a lot of fear because you did a lot of that stuff with FFA and stuff too. Yeah. Well, I'm lucky because I was, I hated public speaking. I hated like just speaking to other people in that way in general. Um, and so I was very lucky that I did FFA and 4-H and I had people that literally forced me to go do public speaking because I would not have been able to break out of my shell as well. But, you know, I'd been done with FFA a little bit just because of COVID. We hadn't had as many experiences um, for a little period of time. So I was out of my shell and then kind of going back into my shell a little bit. But then the pageant, it pulled it right back out again. And of course, mm. we have women that come in and they have you practice and they teach you the public speaking stuff and like refine all the skills that you have. Um, and so I had them a little bit already, but I think that they helped me boost my skills. Awesome. Yeah. So what's after, is there anything after the pageant, the new, the next queen steps in? Do mm -hmm. you stay as a mentor? Do you, I mean, do you stay on the board to help with anything or are you just, all right, Brooke, see ya, have fun. Um, that's up to the, other the director and all those higher up people if they want me to come back and help i hope they do okay because i really do enjoy being there and i want to help the other girls um but yeah i i mean if there's girls in the future that are like hey you were a queen once like what can i do of course i'm gonna be there to help them and give them advice so tell me a little bit uh about you and your aunt's conversations um <laughs> this past year you know um she was the queen yes back in i think 91 91 i think so I believe. um and then of course so how did how did like christmas you know, i mean because they live out of state right yeah they're in oregon um and so when kara comes because she was there right mm -hmm. wasn't she there when you won yeah. and so tell me how those conversations went so she's been telling me for years that I need to do it because, of course, her daughter is up in Oregon. You have to be living in Slow County for like the past six months. Um, so she's like, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And you're old enough. And I was like, oh, OK, we'll see. Because like I said, I wasn't big on public speaking. But when it came time, I was like, OK, maybe this is kind of cool. Like this is something I could be into. 
And so she was really excited the couple days before the pageant. She's like, you're going to win. You're going to win. And I didn't believe her. And so after the pageant, she was so, so excited. And she's like, I knew you could do it. I've been telling you that you could do it. And we've, of course, everybody's made comparison pictures of from when she won and from when I won. And <laughs> now she's just every time that my mom posts something of something I've done, she's just so excited for me. So do you guys have two pictures like in the <laughs> hallway of you guys both in your with your whole queen? Yeah, I think bouquets and everything. My mom or my grandma made like a collage thing and we're both going like this. Oh, that's and, so awesome. And, yeah. That, I mean, that is, that is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It you know, is, your is aunt wins, you know, 30 years ago, you mm -hmm. win. I mean, it's just, it's super cool, yeah. you know. Yeah, so you cool. have that um, that experience. So we're, we're at the end of this. And now what do we do now? We You're outreaching, getting mm -hmm. people to turn in their applications. So tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that. Um, really just for anybody that wants to do it, because like I said, everybody gets so nervous and they're like, I'm not going to be able to do it. This is just for those girls that are really confident and have those skills already. It's like, no, there's people that teach you how to do it. There's people that practice with you and you surprise yourself so much during pageant day. Like my talent, I was totally bombing at every practice because I was so nervous practicing, practicing in front of all these people, but I pulled through pageant day. And you just really you surprise yourself and you need to take a chance on yourself. So anybody who's even thinking about doing it, just look into it a little bit more and maybe apply and see and just see what your abilities are actually made up of because there's so many more things you can do with yourself than you thought. And do you, do you have some informational meetings coming up for these potential contestants? We have one actually um, tonight so this might not be okay <laughs> out by then it's so it's march 29th but there is the first meeting will be may 3rd um so you have to apply of course before that but they'll tell you more about that and then also um i don't think it's up there but if you look at the california mid state fair page and i think also the Miss California Miss Safer Instagram page, there's the director's info on there. And so I'm sure she'd be okay with you calling or emailing her asking for more information about it. Okay, so tonight again, so there's an informational meeting tonight. Yes. And where's that at? That is in the office at the Miss State Fair grounds and that's at 5.30. Okay, 5.30 tonight. Mm -hmm. And then you have a meeting on the third. Yes, so you have to apply to go okay. to that meeting. So you have to already have your application in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and again, where can they go and find this application? Um, the California Mid-State Fair page has the application on it. When you go into the application section, it's on there. Um, and also, I think he put up the flyer. There's a QR code on there. And there should be a link in the bio of the Miss California Mid-State Fair Instagram and Facebook page, um, because that's what they did last year. So I, I believe they'll have that again this year. Okay, so are you expecting a bigger turnout this year, you think? Uh, I think it'll be a surprise. I think it'll be a surprise for us. You never know, really. It's always a surprise. Mm -hmm. Awesome. A ton of people never end up applying until right before. They, they like to wait until the very last minute to apply. So it's always, you're waiting and waiting to see. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Brooke, thank you so much for coming on the show. And congratulations again. Thank um, you. And you are probably probably the best you know spokesperson for the california mid-state fair you know and and uh, all the events that you participated in this year so congratulations and we'll see what happens next thank you <laughs> awesome well there you have it guys thanks for tuning in with brooke smith the california mid-state fair pageant winner queen uh on our show today but guys we can't do this without our sponsors and we want to show them love we have escalar wines wine travelers hideaway rancho sestero meat cutting Visit a Tascadero, 805 Customs, El Red Rooster, Amy and Jamie's Place, Kennedy Club Fitness, Airflow Filter Services, Pacific 805 Spas, and Paso Robles Furniture, guys. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.